The Duchess by XX Impressions Chapter 6 The shift in Antony's stance was subtle enough that the unassuming passerby would not have noticed it. But because it perfectly mirrored the way he stood before you on the night you had met all those weeks ago, your mind could not help but take notice of his slight repositioning. Your mind also could not help but notice that in the moment it took for Antony to protectively move in front of you, his demeanor had gone from warm and friendly to cold and unfeeling as he stared hard daggers at the man still standing in front of you both. With an edge of steel to his voice, your former rescuer began to speak. I do not believe we were properly introduced the last time we met. I am Viscount Bridgerton. He announced with a touch of hostility. Pausing to give your brother-in-law a noticeable once-over, Antony continued by asking with a note of disdain. And who might you be? As if the Viscount's obvious dislike amused him, the man who still had the stench of a brewery following him began to smile spitefully as he spoke. Who am I? Oh, well, I would be a duke by now. Glaring over Antony's shoulder into your unafraid eyes, he finished by quietly seething. If she had just married me, then everything would have gone according to plan. After taking a step into his line of view, the Viscount had your brother-in-law's attention once more. Well, fortunately for her, it did not, he said with a glare of his own. Now if you will excuse us. Holding his hand out to you, Antony respectfully said. My lady. As he waited for you to take it. Placing your hand in his without removing your gaze from the despicable man in front of you meant you saw how his eyes took notice of such a gesture. Narrowing his eyes, your brother-in-law bitterly said. As I recall it, you were rather fussy about being called by your proper title the last time we met your grace. Arching a simple brow, you calmly responded by saying. What may be a title for some, good sir, can simply be a true statement for others and flashed him a cold smile as you did so. Without waiting to see his reaction, you deliberately turned your eyes to the Viscount in order to show him you were ready to take your leave with a brief nod of your head. But before you and Antony could turn to make your departure, the jealous man before you accusingly stated with suspicion. Ah, so she has seduced yet another man of station, has she? Upon hearing such insulting words, you suddenly had to be on hand to hold the Viscount back when he abruptly turned to advance on the one spewing rumours that could possibly ruin your reputation. But it luckily was not needed when a firm hand clasped down on Antony's other shoulder. I do not believe there is any way to speak in front of a lady. Said Simon, as he kept his friend from making a scene while also addressing your brother-in-law with a regal authority. Your surprise at seeing him, and seeing him defend you, only doubled when you felt the approach of his wife on your other side as she said. Indeed your grace. It is very curious that he wonders why those of us who are dukes and duchesses do not consider him to be a true gentleman. Feeling the unwavering support of your rescuer, his friend, and his sister surrounding you made it easier for you to promptingly say with confidence. I believe this man was actually just leaving, Duchess. Realizing that he was now not only outranked, but also outnumbered, your brother-in-law decided to take the time to throw one more glare in your direction before finally skulking away into the crowd. Once he was out of sight, it was Daphne who turned to you and worriedly said. Are you okay? We wanted to make sure everything was all right when we saw how serious you both looked while talking to that man. Who was he? Full of exasperation for the situation, you explained by saying. Long story short, he is my brother-in-law and he will not stop coming after me until I agree to marry him. Raising a soothing hand to your temple, you were speaking more to yourself than anyone else when you said under your breath. I suppose I will have to become a recluse in order to avoid him now. Nonsense. The Duke ended up continuing as you turned to look at him with surprise once more. We will not hear of such a thing. Why not join us at Clydon? It is our estate in the country and it would be the perfect place to get away from prying eyes for a while. And before you could answer, 
Daphne had taken your unoccupied hand as she excitedly pleaded. Do join us. We could invite the whole family, and I just know Hyacinth would love to see you again. The thought of spending time in the girls' company along with everyone else the Bridgertons considered to be family did make you intrigued enough to want to go. But you still were not convinced as you said with a bit of bashfulness. Oh, I am not sure. I would hate to impose on a family gathering. You had unintentionally deflated a little as you said this, but a sudden squeeze reminded you that Anthony was still holding your other hand and forced you to turn in his direction as he sincerely spoke. We would be absolutely honored to host you along with our family. Giving a bow of his head, he finished with. My lady. While flashing a teasing smirk your way as he did so. Unable to formulate a proper thought in time, you looked at the three pairs of expectant eyes watching you and gratefully smiled as you decided to say. Then I would love to attend. And received three smiles in return. End of chapter 6